Hi everyone, my name is Jordan and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a review of The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan. This is the fourth book in the Wheel of Time series. Since this is the fourth book, this is going to be a spoilery review. So if you have not read this book, please do not watch this. Come back to it after you've read it because this will be full of spoilers. So far, I think this book is probably the best of the four I've read. There were definitely some things that frustrated me in it, but I think this is the best so far. So in this one, everyone leaves Tyr and kind of splits up. I'm gonna preface this whole video by saying I have not looked up pronunciation guides or anything for this series. So if I'm like butchering names or cities or whatever, like, please be patient, I have no idea. So the the whole crew splits up. Perrin and Fail, Fail, I don't know. They go to the two rivers because they hear that there are Trollocs attacks and everything in the two rivers. So they take Loyal, and go through the way gates and go to the two rivers. Um, the white cloaks have kind of like invaded all of the two rivers to protect them, but we all know how good the white cloaks are. And their storyline kind of follows. Hi, Buck. Hi, handsome. Go lay down. So we kind of follow their storyline as they, they also end up getting married at the end, which is, it was so cute. I've I'll get into more of like the weird romances that happen in this book. I think that Robert Jordan is not good at romance, or at least so far. Like I feel like a lot of the romance is just stunted and awkward, but I think that Perrin's romance with Fail is very cute. And when they got married, I teared up. And then when Fail uh, comes during the big fight with a bunch of people from the other town, I was like in tears because it was like just so beautiful and I, I think that her character is probably the least weird female character in his books because most of them are really freaking weird. So that was like one of my favorite moments in the book was when she showed up with all the more fighters and then after the fight's over when Perrin's like I just have to get to her I was like oh, stop my heart. Um, but I think that Perrin's kind of character development has been really good um, but back to the plot. So Rand goes with Egwin and Moraine and Lan and they go to the Wastes where Rand goes through Ruidian and Matt also goes through Ru Ruidian and then they have to get all of the AL clan chiefs together um, because Rand is going to need their help with defeating all of the bad guys, you know. Um, I think that storyline was also very interesting and fun. Elaine and... Nynaeve, they go to, I forgot the town name, uh, they go to the seedy town, I forgot the town name, uh, but they go with the thief catcher and the gleeman, whose names I both can't remember. There's like so many characters in these books, I can't remember anyone's names. But they go looking for the Black Aja because they have reason to believe that they are in this town. Their plotline was a little less interesting to me. So they meet one of the Shanchen there and they don't realize that they befriend her and then she reveals herself. They have to work together to find the Black Aja. Nynaeve's battle with one of the Forsaken was like so cool. One of the coolest battle scenes so far. I thought that it was really interesting and dynamic and I just really liked it a lot. So those are kind of the main plot lines we follow. What we kind of mention briefly Min who is at the tower and the tower falls and the Amarillin seat is kind of booted and they kind of go on the run and so that was kind of interesting. I assume that will be resolved more in the next books. We didn't really ever go back to that. They were just like the tower fell. Oops they're on the run. So I'm hoping we kind of get more of that in the next book. So now I want to talk about the characters. I feel like Robert Jordan's character development is really good in some ways and really bad in others. So I think that his main characters he focuses a lot on, especially the male main characters. A lot of the female main characters, while they also get their character development and they also have really cool powers and they're also very strong in their own way, he makes a point 
to talk about how physically weak women are like all like all the time anytime there's a woman on the page something will be mentioned about how they are physically weaker than men like fail is super cool can use her daggers like great fighter but it is mentioned all the time how Perrin has to do something for her because she physically can't do it because she's so weak and it's just really frustrating. I feel like a lot of the women's character development is dependent on men. I feel like Nynaeve's is less so. Like her and Lan have this romance and stuff which I think is being done well because Nynaeve is the only like sensible person in this group and Nynaeve doesn't let her love and relationship with Lan get in the way of like her goals but I feel like Elaine is just like constantly thinking about Rand and like every time women are talked about it's just like them fretting over men and it I, I, I know that the men's point of view we also get some of that like Perrin is thinking about her a lot but the men are always just thinking like I don't understand women they're confusing like that's it and it's talked about constantly. Every male character's like, I don't get women. I just don't get women. And I'm like, okay. Robert Jordan's like division between men and women is just so weird and unrealistic. Like it, it gets really frustrating. And I feel like I'm not doing a very good job of explaining it, but I highlighted certain points as I was going that was just like, why are we even talking about this? Like, why are we spending so long talking about how weak women are or how like all they care about is men? And I don't know, it just was really weird to me. And I see discussions all the time in like the fandom where they're like, this book isn't sexist because only women are allowed to have magic and they're the only powerful m magic users. And I'm like, that doesn't mean that there's no sexism. Like he makes it very apparent the differences between men and women and they're always the same. Women are physically weaker. Women are confusing. Women are manipulative. Women are seductresses. Like, it's always that. And the men are always, like, confused about women and super strong. And, like, it's just... I feel like his separation between men and women is weird. However, I feel like we have gotten some interesting character developments. I think that Perrin... Perrin's story has been the most interesting for me so far. His character development has been really good. I feel like from where we started with him just like, I'm a blacksmith, to getting his wolfy powers and then now where he's kind of like Lord Perrin and he's like, I really don't want this power. I think that it has been very interesting. I do wish we had more wolfy stuff going on and I get that there were no wolves in the two rivers because of um, that one guy or whatever. But I'm hoping that in future books we get more of that because I think it's really cool. And it's really reminiscent of the wit in the Farseer trilogy. It's kind of like the same power where you can connect with beasts. Um, so I think it's really cool. I think Perrin's character development has been the coolest. I wish we were getting more of Rand's point of view. I feel like we get a lot of people around Rand and them talking about Rand. But I feel like we don't have a lot of time in Rand's head. Because sometimes I'm like, is he losing it already? Like, it's hard to tell if he's crossed over to being mad yet or not. Like, it, he, he keeps mentioning this secret plan he has and how he has to beat everyone to it. And I understand that I, I like, I feel like he's trying to uh, beat the actual Wheel of Time itself and, like, make this decision without anyone knowing so that he can escape the Wheel of Time to complete what he needs to do. Um, which is what I think is been hinting at. But like, I wish we knew a little bit more about that. And I, I just wish we got a little more insight into Rand's thinking. I want more of Matt. I feel like his character arc is leading up to something big and it's just like a lot of buildup. Like with the old tongue, the spear he found in Ruidian, all of the luck he has. I, I think it's really interesting. And I don't know how much of it is coming from that dagger he had in the previous books or if this is something that he was destined for from the beginning and that just added to it. Um, so I'm really interested to see how that shapes out. I feel like we also aren't getting enough of Moraine. I feel like she was a bigger character in previous books and now she's just kind of like tagging along on this adventure. And I get that um, Rand is not filling her in on what he wants, but I still feel like we could get some of her point of view maybe, just to kind of get a little more in depth of this party of people. 
So I feel like Robert Jordan is doing a pretty good job at character development of the main characters. However, the side characters, like all of the small side characters, I feel like are way too two-dimensional. I feel like because there are just so many characters, he has to give each character this like one trait or habit that m makes you remember who they are besides just their name. Like whether it be a physical character trait or something they're always doing, like a tick or something, it's just like, okay, we get it. Like at some point it becomes repetitive. Um, and I understand that he's just trying to differentiate all these characters, but maybe we just don't need so many characters. Like, I think that some characters are just unnecessary. Now, into the writing, the actual writing itself. I don't think it's bad. I think that the plot has gotten very interesting and the lore of this world is really good. And there are some key scenes that I'll talk about in a bit that I think were extremely successful. However, again, some of the repetition is just like really frustrating. Like Nynaeve pulling on her braid or mentioning the disparities between men and women or like things like that like he just keeps like hammering that over and over and over and the repetition just gets annoying to where every time I read it I'm like uh, eye roll and it like takes me out of the book so like like I feel like if we took a lot of that out we probably could have shaved a book or two off this series like this series is so long and I'm like well maybe it's because we spend so much time talking about Nine Aves hair I don't know it's just like it, it gets frustrating However, this book did have some of the coolest scenes. I've already talked about Nynaeve battling the Forsaken, which was just such a well-written battle scene. I felt like it was so immersive and it really helped show how powerful Nynaeve is because we're always told that like she has this power but she's not very good at accessing it. And I think seeing this power actually manifested was just wild. I loved it. I've also already talked about Fail showing up with all of those fighters. I think that that was a very cinematic scene. Like, you know, like in the middle of this battle, they're feeling like they're gonna lose. And then you see them, you see all these fighters come over a hill and start shooting arrows. Like I thought it was just a really cool scene. Um, definitely, I feel like not like super unique. Like I feel like we get that in a lot of media, but I still think it was a very effective scene and very cool, especially seeing all of that from Perrin's point of view. The last scene I felt like was incredibly successful was Rand's walk through Ruidian. As he's like going back in time and seeing the history of the AL, I felt like it was just such a cool scene. Like every time he would finish a scene and see that guy that was like trying to go through it and then saw him like clawing his eyes out and then Rand just had to take another step and go through the next scene. And the fact that he was seeing each of these scenes from the point of view of someone that was there and it was a different person every time like i just felt like that whole sequence was so cool and so well written i think that robert jordan is just not very good at being concise like i feel like these key moments these really cool scenes were so well written and so cool and if he could just trim up his writing a little bit i understand it's these are older books uh, but I feel like if they were just trimmed up a little bit, edited down more, condensed a little bit, it would have been more fast paced. There would have been less of this weird, odd repetition and the whole book as a, and the series and book as a whole would just be more successful because those three scenes were so, so good. And there was so much stuff in the book that I just feel like wasn't needed. So overall, I gave this book a four out of five stars. I know I complained about it a lot, but that's because I did actually enjoy it. So I had the, the things I didn't enjoy, I wanted to kind of dive into. I am excited to continue this series. I'm gonna try to pace myself, not read them back to back to back because I feel like there's enough annoyances in these books for me to get really burnt out on them quick. So I'm gonna try to, sorry if you can hear that really loud noise. Somebody's like rumbling their car right outside my window. But anyway, I feel like this series is off to a good start. I'm excited to continue. I know, I know I just need to go into these books expecting these annoyances because I don't think they're going anywhere. Um, but I am excited to read the next one. I don't think I'll be reading it in May. I think I'll probably try to get to it in June or July because I have a lot of arcs to read and a lot of pre-orders to read. So I may not get to the fifth one for a bit. Um, but I did really enjoy this one. I think it was the most well-written book of the series. And I think that Robert Jordan's really starting to 
get his feet under him and I am excited to continue. So that is the end of my review of The Shadow Rising. Comment down below and tell me what you thought of this book. Tell me if you liked it, if you didn't like it. I'm very curious to see other people's thoughts on this. I'm probably going to go watch other people's reviews now that I've finished the book, see if they agreed with what I said. Um, but yeah, I, I don't see The Wheel of Time becoming like one of my favorite series ever. Maybe it will. I honestly don't know. But as of now, I'm enjoying it, but it is, there's enough annoyances that like I don't see myself putting it on my favorite fantasy series of all times. However, I still have like nine books left, so you never know. Things could turn around. Um, but yeah, that is the end of this video. Thank you all for watching. As always, your support means the world to me, and until next time, thanks. Thank you.